Hey everyone, and welcome to 121 in Flux. I am Peter, that is Connor. We talk about movies on this show. Not new releases, typically older stuff. And this episode is kind of special because it's our monthly patrons vote episode uh, throughout the month of July. I just had to think about what month we were on. Uh, the patrons voted uh, on patreon.com slash TV uh, for which one of four movies. Uh, they were all films from 1987, and the winner was Raising Arizona, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, so, And of course, the vote this month is up for what the bonus episode is going to be next month, uh, and that is all thriller, serial killer type movies. Uh, the options for that are Prisoners, The Silence of the Lambs, Seven, and uh, the Korean film Memories of Murder. So uh, that's the vote right now. If you're, so if you're on Patreon, uh, you can go over and check that out and uh, put in your vote to see what film we're going to talk about next month. Uh, but yeah, so this episode, Raised in Arizona, it's a Coen Brothers movie. It's a Coen Brothers movie that I had not seen before. Have you, you, did you see it before? I've, I haven't seen it, no. Alright, so there you go. First time watch for both of us. Uh, which is pretty... Actually, no, I hadn't seen a couple of others either. I was going to say, I, like, I think I'd seen one of them out of the four, which was Untouchables, but I hadn't seen any of the other ones. So. Uh, but this, this is a first time watch for both of us then. Uh, obviously, I like the Coen Brothers. Uh, they've made a lot of good movies. Yeah. Um, I love No Country for Old Men, I love True Grit, uh, Fargo, of course, uh, a bunch of good stuff. Um, that said, Coen Brothers do typically have this, uh, like, they have, like, two or three different types of movie, I'll say. Right? Yeah. And, this, and this very clearly does not fall into the No Country for Old Men, True Grit type of movie that they make. This is definitely more on the comedy side of things. Certainly. Uh, so, we'll, we'll start with a little bit of spoiler-free, uh, give our sort of general thoughts, and then we'll give you a warning before we go into the spoilers. So, what is Raising Arizona? It is Nicolas Cage and Holly Hunter, who are so goddamn young, because it's 1987. Uh, you, you forget that's actually 30 years ago now. Yeah, exactly. You, you, and then you remember, because it's Nicolas Cage before he was really weird. Yeah, well, it was Holly Hunter, because like, I kind of like... She seems familiar. Who is? Because this was obviously the, 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 the names came up during the opening title, because it's actually a, it was a good like 10-minute prologue it's sort of yeah. like narration kind of like montage of like all the setup, uh, which was fine. It was a fun stuff. I was actually starting to question if the whole movie was going to be like that though. I felt like if we ever going to slow down and just have scenes, like I was starting to worry that it was just going to be all this like narration with all very. It's it's the sort of thing that you can see the Cam brothers pull in though, isn't it? Like you, you can, that, that's yeah. why you actually question it. It's like they could do that. But then we got the title screen, we got the names, and then it went to like a, a proper scene that was slow paced. I'm like, oh, good, right, okay, good. Yeah, nice it's, it's a regular scene. movie now. Yeah, uh, I, I was, but it was it was Holly Hunter uh, who plays Ed, the uh, the wife of the pair, uh, and I, I was like, she seems familiar. Like it, it was like her voice and kind of her mouth, the way she was speaking. It was like, she seems familiar. Who is she? And it was when the name came. I was like, oh, it's Holly Hunter. She looks nothing like I think of Holly Hunter <laughs> looking like because I'm I'm used to what she looks like now. That's true. Uh, you forget people age. Whereas here, she's like a, a what late twenties something brunette. It's weird. Yeah. Um, whereas Nicholas Cage, I mean, he's younger, but he still looks like Nicholas Cage. <laughs> I mean, he just does. Uh, yeah, yeah, he does. Uh, so, so what is the movie actually about? So, so Nicholas Cage plays H.I., who is this petty criminal who does. He basically holds up convenience stores um, with an unloaded weapon. Uh, he does that specifically because it's it's not classed as armed robbery in that case, and he gets less time in jail, which is yeah. you know relatively smart. smart, especially if you don't actually want to shoot anyone. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, if someone pulls a gun on you, then maybe maybe it was a bad idea. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Uh, th- then you at least try and pretend like it's a standoff. Don't get scared. And just say so you're going to back oh, you go, look, slowly. look, it's you just go look. It's not even armed. There's nothing here. You don't need to shoot me. <laughs> Just be the wimp and just admit that you're useless. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he, he so he basically falls in love with uh, the officer who's taking his photo, his lineup photo. Uh, well, not lineup photo. You know what I mean? The, the you know the profile, the, the profile shots. Yeah. Um, and he basically flirts with her, and then he goes to prison, and you know that lasts however many months. He gets out. He immediately does the same robbery again, despite you know assuring the parole board that he's going to be he's going to be nice. Uh, and then he flirts with her again. So and then he goes to prison again. And then it's the third time where he's like, "Ah, I really like you." And he, he says, because I think he says in the narration, and this this third stretch of time that 
this is the first time he actually felt the 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 punishment of prison because he kind of wanted to be with because I, I think in the third time is when she's upset that her fiance has left her yeah uh, and she's crying uh so that's when he gets out the third time he actually goes to, to the police station not being arrested and just walks in and uh you know proposes and whatnot uh and it's, 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 it's and this, for some reason that works it's this oddball romance you know quirky characters it's, it's a very quirky film of course everything's yeah. heightened in that sense uh, and they're trying to have a baby and they can't and we're, we're still by the way this is still the spoiler free setup of the movie right I, I, i'm still in the setup so what the movie's actually about is that they can't have kids and they see on the news that nathan arizona and his wife uh have had uh quintuplets yes yeah just make, make sure i got the right word um uh, so that's five babies and they're basically thinking oh well five's a lot to handle that's that's too much for one couple we'll take one so they steal a baby and that's the movie the movie's about them having this baby that they've stolen uh, plus some of the convict friends who include which includes john goodman from the prison end up like showing up and like causing chaos and then there's another element to the movie that i didn't know about beforehand and i thought was pretty cool um and you know it's, it's this quirky kind of comedy with some sort of dark elements uh and that's that's kind of it. So I guess I'll ask the question, Connor. Did you enjoy raising Arizona? I did. It was a lot of fun. You can you can tell it's a Coen Brothers film. Like you say, it's not. You know, they have different styles of film, mm. but their comedy still carries across. You know, like I said, that that quirky, heightened sense of things. That that's very much what I associate them with. Yeah, there's nothing about the film that feels realistic, but it's it's not meant to. It's it's got this right. this kind of wacky sort of layer to it. Um, I liked it as well. I I do. It's definitely kind of. It's not one of my favorite Coen Brothers movies. So definitely, like I say, No Country for Old Men, uh, True Grit, Fargo. Right, those they're are like, the ones. Oh, they're serious contenders for like. Oh, these are great movies. But this is just. Oh, this is fun. Well, that's the thing. Like, some people prefer this type of Coen Brothers movie, and they would say, "No, this is the better one because it's it's like." For for me though, I prefer your No Countries, your your Fargos, those movies. Um, this I think is a lot of fun. Um, and there's a couple of key sort of elements of the movie that I really like a lot. Uh, yeah. I'll just say the baker. Everything, <laughs> yeah. everything with the baker, I loved. Yeah. Um, there's a really fun sort of sequence in the middle of the movie that it's, it's basically buying diapers uh, that turns into this extended action sequence. Uh, I liked all of that. I liked how that sort of wrapped around itself. That was a lot of fun. I think the film is very inventive. That's like sort of like my main mm. kind of thing that I took away from it that I liked a lot was how inventive it was in some of its stuff. Um, so, so some of this, you know, the, the opening like narration that goes on, I think a little bit too long. Like you know, by the time we get to the setup, I'm like, you probably could have condensed this a bit. <laughs> like maybe just a touch. Right, it, but it kind of goes into that whole thing of you know going overboard. You know, yeah. like right, let just just show you how ridiculous this is. How many times this keeps happening. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I mean, it's rule of threes. It happens three times, so I guess I can't, yeah. I can't criticize it that much. That's it. If they only showed it twice, you'd complain. Well, I wouldn't complain necessarily. It was just, it was just, it did get to the point though where I was legitimately, like I say, worried that the whole movie was going to be this fast paced with just a narration constantly. Yeah. Um, but then it got to the scene after the credits where it's the you know the the theft of the baby, and that scene is slow paced. It's still very funny. It's like, and I, I was getting into it more at that point. Um, so no, uh, I, I liked the movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I wouldn't rank it, you know, high in the Coen Brothers list, but I, I, I definitely enjoyed watching it, and I'm glad that I finally checked it out. Uh, so, what, what, I mean, the actors are good. I think that's first yeah, good performances all around. We've, we've talked obviously a lot about the uh, the the, the Coens and how how their the hate and sense of humor works really well. Obviously, this is this might be the oldest Coen Brothers movie I've seen. In fact, was it the first? Maybe the first actually. <laughs> In terms of that feature length, uh, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it might well be. I'd, I'd, I'd have to think about it, but I'm, it I'm probably just, is. I'm just going to check. I don't want to. Pro- IMDb, no, give me director. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Give me uh, some no, stupid thing no, first. It's their second movie. Blood Simple was first. Have you seen that one? I have not seen Blood. So it's the oldest so one. It's the oldest one you've seen. Yes, that part is correct. I've seen the next film. The next film is Miller's Crossing. I have seen that. Okay, that's pretty good. I've not seen that one. And finally enough, that is a very serious uh, Coen Brothers movie. That's a gangster movie. Oh, cool. Uh, so I just think it's funny that that's, uh, that last next. It just it just shows you how much they. It's almost like they, they to to keep from being bored. They they constantly jump back and forth between their styles. Do you think one of the brothers likes 
one style more than the other, and they compromise by going, right, we'll do your one this time and mine next. <laughs> That'd be. I could see it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, like, like, they're very versatile, though, aren't they, in that sense? They are. Like, like you said, there's some, there's some tell signs that it is a Coen Brothers movie, but it, it does, like, this doesn't feel anything like some of the other movies. Like, there's definite differences. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I, I think part of the reason why the movie works for me is that the ultimate... Where the story goes at the end, um, ultimately you realise what the movie's kind of been about and characters make the right decisions uh, towards the end. Because I, I think that the danger with this movie is that, you know, that your, your main characters kidnap a baby to, to have their own, you know, to keep it for themselves. And I, I think there's a moral problem with that, where you're like... <laughs> I should hope you'd think that. <laughs> can, can, you know, can, can you ever truly, like... But I, I think ultimately, and I don't think this is much of a spoiler to say that a, a big part of the arc of the movie is maybe that those characters realise that they probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> right. And I think it's one of those strengths of the movie where, like you say, it's it, it, the whole thing that your main character is precedent on doing this kind of frankly awful thing. Yeah. But you still kind of root for them throughout the movie. Yeah, yeah, certainly. And I, I think it's when other characters start to like get in in the action where you're like, yeah, maybe you should realise what you did was wrong. Like, because as much as okay, someone else is after the baby now, you also kidnapped it in the first place. And it, you, right. you kind of like you, you look at it, and luckily that the movie goes in the, the right places with this, where the you know the, the lessons are learned. There is a good moral to the story. I think the, the story at its core is about H.I. Nicholas Cage's character, um, and about him. It's essentially a movie about finally settling down and having the married life with a kid, and how scary that might be. Yeah, it's kind of getting over your midlife crisis, essentially. Yeah, that's that's kind of what it is. Uh, so, with that said, I think we'll get to spoilers because I th- I, th- I feel like I'm talking around things now. So, full spoilers from this point on for uh, Raising Arizona. So, uh, by the way, I love the uh, the you know Nathan Arizona. Like that, I love his whole thing where he's constantly trying to sell stuff. Like he, even when he's been interviewed by the police and it's like the the press are there at the end of his little speech, he's like, "And remember, business as usual uh, was it unpainted Arizona because he, he sells unpainted yeah. furniture. Um, it's like in fixtures and stuff like that. It's like, hey, remember, business as usual, and you know, if you can't find if you can find lower prices, my name is not Nathan Arizona, and like he keeps saying that even when he's been interviewed. That's it, you know, like a lot of movies, I, I feel like oh, I have to check the character names afterwards. Oh, you not know, for him. if it's been a day. Or two. Not yeah. for him. Never gonna forget that. I, I'll be honest. I'd forgotten every name but him. Like you know, I've got IMDb up at the side so I can check names. But Nathan Arizona is never leaving my head. That's it, because it's because it's that. Or, or my name's not Nathan Arizona. You're never gonna forget that, are you? No, you're not. Especially since Arizona for your last name is pretty unique. It is. Yeah. yeah. Especially since they're in Arizona. Right. Which but, is uh, which is. Oh, uh, well, I was almost surprised that they addressed that he'd changed it to that. Yeah. But it makes sense that he did. Like it's just yeah. like he he wanted to. I'm a man of the, these people. Like, this is my home, and like, this is my name. Like you can sort of see the market employ behind it. Like this is why yeah. I'm going to call call. Sounds the homegrown. Yes. So. So yeah. So so by the way, I love that the babies are Larry, Barry, Gary, Harry, and then Nathan Jr. <laughs> it's really great, isn't it? And I feel like there's some favoritism. Like I feel like that gives them a complex. Like the other four are like, how, why was he named Nathan Jr.? He was named after father. And yet we were all right. <laughs> and it, it, it's this idea that that's, obviously that's the one they steal. And it's like no, yeah. you took the one that was his name. You know, any of the others they might not have even noticed which one it was for sure. Yeah. Like I, I, I like, but uh, oh, that actually reminds me. Probably my first big laugh of the movie is when Nathan is being again. He's he's on the the press at the front of his house. And someone says, oh, which baby did they take? And he actually says the exact same thing Nicholas Cage said earlier when he was asked by Ed, who did you take? He's like, Nathan Jr., I think. Yeah. The father well, saying that, that cracked me up. I love how like, they're, in, they're in the crib, you know, they've got all the, the name plaques above them, but there's nothing separating them to say, no, this is this one. No, there's no barriers in between. They're all just crawling all over. So, they, you know, they could, two of them could swap over in the night. They'd come back up and they go, right, well, you're Larry now and you're Barry. Here's the thing, though. Until they're about two, does it matter? <laughs> really? Probably not. <laughs> no. Does it really matter? It, it, like, if you go with the home of the wrong parents, sure, there's a problem there. But if you, if you get twin brothers, does it really matter? Until they're about two or three, when they start to speak and have an identity, does it really matter if you're getting their names mixed up? Who cares? <laughs> Who gives a shit? You're a bit awful father. <laughs> 
only only if I get twins or triplets or you know something above, above that. As long as yeah. they're born one by one, it's fine. <laughs> that's it. You can you just that's it. You can get one more, and that's the rules. Yeah, well, because you got at least nine months. Well, yeah, yeah, that's true. Unless you've swapped to a different wife, you've got at least nine months to <laughs> till the next one is popping out. Uh, it's enough to distinguish them then. Yeah, Should exactly. Help. Well, yeah, because the other one will have some hair by that point. True. <laughs> Hopefully not ginger hair though. Go no, no. straight up for adoption if there's ginger hair. I'll tell you that right. <laughs> I'll be I'll, I'll be turned away at the door. They'll, they'll not accept accept them. No, they'll be like, yeah, throw in the river. What was what was his name? Well, his name was this. However, I changed it to Connor but for obvious reasons. Once the hair started to come in. <laughs> I don't know if I should be insulted or honoured. <laughs> well, I changed it to Connor when I decided to put it up for adoption, so I mean, you, you do the math. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Oh, dear. We were, we talk, we were talking about the movie. Uh, um, yeah, we were. Uh, Larry, Gary, Harry, Barry. Can't even think of four names that rhyme like that. Larry, Barry, Harry, Gary. Yeah, that's all four of them. That is, yeah. Yeah. Is there a fifth one, though? Like... Is, is that why the last one is Nathan Junior? Because they couldn't think of a fifth. Because they couldn't think of a fifth. <laughs> well, that's it. Did they get? To, did they get to those four and they go, ah, he'll just be Nathan Junior? Or did they start with Nathan Junior and go, right, you're the best. The rest of them get all the knockoff names. And what made him the best? How did they pick? That's the question, isn't it? I mean, you have to imagine there's something special about him. That that that's why that's why they stole that one. Is it wrong that my my head goes to he had the biggest penis? Yes. <laughs> Very wrong. Just from, just from my dad point of view, that's why you, that's the that's the junior. That's that one. He looks like he's going to be bigger. These other four, they're, they're the the lesser <laughs> individuals. I mean, you never know. Maybe that's what it was. I mean, I I assume it's just because he he wanted someone to be able to go. Oh, my name's not Nathan Arizona. To continue the business. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That right? So one of them's got to be that. I like the idea that he, the, 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 you know they had the five of them in the hospital. So okay, we need to name them. One's going to be Nathan Arizona. I like the idea that he just closed his eyes and just went, right, that one. Yeah. Well, to be fair, how, how do you name, the, like, five babies? Like, how do you pick which one's which, really? Totally. This one looks more like a Larry. Does it? But this one looks more like a Gary. <laughs> sure. All <laughs> oh, right. Um, so he's still a baby. There's a... Uh, and also, the scene's very fun because there's a lot of him tiptoeing around, and the babies are like getting everywhere, and he's like trying to find them because they're getting lost, and then the whole thing plays out. Um, so the, the movie kind of progresses, and I really love the baker stuff because he has this dream right where he sees this baker, and this baker's got two shotguns strapped. He's like very Mad Max, two shotguns strapped. He's back. Yeah. He's riding away from like, the fire. It feels like the post apocalypse because he's out in the desert. He shoots like a, he throws like a grenade to like a is it a bunny? Yeah. And then he then he uses his shotgun on like an iguana or something like that, and it's all very like apocalyptic and it's like driving his and it feels like it's getting closer. And honestly, I, I was surprised the movie went down this path where he turned out to be a real person because at this point, yeah. at, at this point, I was fully convinced. No, no, this is this is his inner like desire to rob places and like his self. Yeah, like, it's a representation out. of himself at yeah. his his worst slash best. His, his destructive self coming to ruin things. Yeah. Uh, that, that's what it felt like to me. And it still represents that. Like I still like, even right up to the end. That's why at the end of oh, the movie of like his wife fights him as well, but he's the one who has to def- defeat him because he has to defeat his own worst enemy, which is himself. So he, yeah. uh, even though he's a real person, he still represents yeah, that. Yeah, the, the the wife can help, but he yeah. still has to be the one to do it. Yeah, so he still represents that, even though he is a real uh, bounty hunter. Essentially, is what it turns out to be. He is a bounty hunter, yeah. And it's 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 so wacky when he shows up with you know he shows up at Nathan Arizona. I'm like, oh okay, we're doing this. Yeah, yeah. Look, like, because at this point you see like a couple of shots of him riding and like getting closer to things, but you, you still think it's just like a representation of his head. But then he's like there, and it's like okay, right. So he's actually a thing. Uh, and the, the entire final sequence, we you know when he, he drives by and picks up the baby off the road and. Like he puts it in the front of the bike and yeah, really really fun stuff. I, I think that's the thing that impressed me the most. But I, I didn't expect coming out of this thinking, oh, there was two good action sequences. But I actually thought the final action sequence on the road with the the baker and the running around and like pulling the grenade pin. I thought all oh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, the one in the middle of the, the movie when Nicolas Cage at his worst, when he finally gets sick of this like you know responsibility because that's, that's a big thing in the movie is that 
his two friends break out of prison, John Goodman and the other guy, who, who are uh, Gail and Evel, and they come to stay at their place, and they represent his old life, and Ed has these two friends, it's actually his boss from work, it's uh, Nicholas Cage's boss from work, and his wife, Frances, Frances McDormand, before she became like a, a regular uh, Coen Brothers feature, uh, which I guess yeah. maybe this is the start of it, uh, and for all I know she was in the short films or whatever before now, but maybe, maybe she's in Blood Simple. Like I say, yeah, you wouldn't it. know because you've not seen it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but and this is like they represent oh, again like this is the new life where he's married and he's got all this responsibility and it's all these and these because these, they bring their like five kids and they're like awful little shits they're like tearing his car apart and they're doing all the, they're writing fart on the wall and yeah. all all sorts of they're stuff. they're atrocious so so it's this this very much thing and obviously it's very funny at the end because the the guy like says they're swingers and he's like offering then uh, you know that's when he gets punched and it's like you know he's he's basically just lost his job because he's, he's he's lost his shit and punched the who's his boss fair but, enough though this one oh yeah this one's fair enough like, everything else isn't but this one's fair but after all this goes down they're, they're in the car he's in the car with with his wife and they stop they stop at a you know convenience store and she's like oh we need we need uh huggies for the baby you know some some diapers so he goes in and he decides he's like keep the engine running. He's like, oh god, he's he's, he, he's not going to pay for it. He wants to steal them for the thrill of stealing them. He needs this in yeah. his life at this point. This is his midlife crisis. So he he puts on the stocking over his head, which uh, covers nothing really because it's see through. It does make him look really creepy. To be fair, it does, but I don't think it disguises him that much. I think I disagree. Actually, do you reckon? I, th- I mean, I know what it's him because I know what Nicolas Cage looks like, but I think if you ask the store clerk, like, later, if you showed him a picture of, like, five guys and one of them was him, I don't think he would necessarily know that was I don't know. I feel like, one. you know, compared to a balaclava, it's really ineffective. You can still see all his okay. features. You can see, like, all right, he's got a moustache. You, you can see, see got, that. You can see he's got a moustache, but I don't think you can clearly see... If, if you give him five guys with a moustache, I don't think he could tell, for sure. I don't have to test this. <laughs> <laughs> all right we need someone to send a picture with a stocking over their head and then we need to send then you need to send five pictures of people who look like you including yourself and we see we need to see if we can guess it <laughs> yeah let's do this <laughs> don't do that it's weird <laughs> um, so but it ends it's like so she gets pissed and she drives off and the clerk pulls out a gun and he's like he's ready to fight um, and she she drives off and he's like oh shit like, and the cops are coming because the guy pressed the silent alarm so he starts running down the street uh, then like he ends up like in the backyard with this dog the dog breaks loose and then all these other dogs start joining in so we end up with this insane chase sequence where the cops are chasing him the clerk's chasing him uh, the, 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 the wife's driving about she gets pissed off and says oh yeah we need to go and pick up your father and she turns back but he's getting chased by the cop like, and it's this really fun chase where not only through all these backyards, he ends up in another. He ends up dropping the the, the, the diapers on the ground on the road. He ends up going into another supermarket. He picks up another <laughs> another set of diapers. Willis is in the. Oh, it's he's determined got, to have these. He's got them again, um, and then eventually he gets them dropped as well. There's a lot of wacky stuff in the supermarket with like you know people with uh, their, their shopping carts like driving into people and like dri- yeah. you know him running away and all all the rest of it. Really fun stuff. In fact, I think even one of the, the people who works in the, the supermarket pulls out a gun at one point as well. Like, it turns into this big, over-the-top... It's almost like the, uh... Like, a, a smaller-scale version of, like, you know, Blues Brothers, where all the cars get involved in the chase scene. Yeah. Kind of, kind of yeah, that kind is. of vibe. Uh, but then eventually he gets out of the supermarket, and she, she, like, whips the car around and picks him up. But as they're driving back, they happen to pass the part of the road where they drop the original diapers, so he picks them yeah, up. Yeah, they're having this argument, he's like... And he just goes really calm, he's like, oh, just left here, honey. Yeah. Yeah, it was a really fun scene actually, because because of that as well at the end. But it, yeah, it was just it was a super fun sequence. It was like, it was. okay, this is where it's getting event of it. I'm really getting into. It. I like like you know like when he goes through the house. Yeah, I thought that was uh, really well shot because like, you know like follows him through. It, it does some some Do interesting things. Do you know what I liked about that house as well? I think that house was a really cool design. It yeah, felt it was, like, wasn't it? It felt like there was a there were stairs going down, but it was like it was like it looked like stairs going up to like someone's second floor because it was all carpeted. Then you go down there, and there was more rooms. And yeah, I, I get that someone. Yeah, they've just renovated the basement so that it's it's much more livable. But it just it felt really. It, it was almost like the house he went into was on a hill, so the downstairs actually had like another exit down downstairs. It, yeah, it was just a really unique design. I thought. No, you're right, but I I think it worked really well. It did. Yeah, there was, was a lot of handheld. There was a lot of like uh, whipping back and forth as the the cop chased them in from behind. There was a lot of yeah. that. Yeah, it was good stuff. Uh, yeah, I think actually, if I'm if I'm going to like and like just talk about what I liked in the movie, I think the movie for me got a lot stronger 
from that point on. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I like the opening, like the first biker bit, but it was this chase sequence and then the rest of the movie where, you know, where his friends, uh, Gail and Evel, like realise the baby's the famous baby that's been kidnapped and they try to steal it and they go in this bank case together with the baby. Uh, and they're like, oh, we can't leave him out in the car because, like, we're, you know, th- you know, if we, if we die in there, like, and you know, they're, they're being realistic, they could die in here. There's a risk. Like, they don't want them to, the baby to be left there for hours until someone finds him. So they take the baby into the heist. Yeah. And there's a lot of fun stuff with miscommunications. Like, oh, you know, freeze and get down. Well, no, we can't do both. Do you want us to move and get down or do you want us to freeze? Yeah. And then they ask the teller to, like, give them the money. It's like, no, we're down the floor. You told us to get down the floor. <laughs> yeah, and he turns around, it's like, where are they? And my favourite part is is that when the biker's chasing them uh, through this afterwards, uh, he's chasing, not them, but he's chasing the, you know Nicholas Cage and Holly Hunter through the, the, the bank, everyone's still on the floor. Like they've, they've waited, they're still waiting there on the floor. Right, just... We see it a couple of times, because you know, when, the, when, he go, when they rob the, the gas station, yeah. and uh, he goes, right, you count to this number, and then back down, I'm going to be back in five minutes to check. And then and... obviously they go off and they forget the baby. And they come back, and and then he's he's just about to give up. Go, oh, forget this. He's not coming back. I don't need to do this. And then he looks up and sees the car, and he's like, nope, carry on counting. Yeah, yeah. I I think the second half of the movie is a lot more fun because it really by this point this is where everything starts to pay off, like all these things that set up. And I I really felt what the movie was about. Like I say, when it got to that final thing with the the baker coming after him, like that that whole idea that he's he's battling his own like immaturity here and he's he's his own desire for all this other stuff and he's not wanting willing, willing to have the the responsibilities that the life you know co- you know comes with all this stuff um so like i say he, he has to beat him he has to be the one to do it um and i thought that f- whole final section was very exciting i was it really I was, was. and I, I think the the action was better than i was expecting going in mm. like because you know once it became clear that this is uh one of their comedies I wasn't expecting much in the way of action sequences. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then when it got to that first, I was like, "Oh, this is actually really impressive." And then, obviously, it got to that set, that that the main one with the bike, and I was like, "This is crazy." This yeah, because it, it shoots the front window out and then the back window, and then he throws in a grenade. They have to run from the car. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it gets dire. Like, <laughs> it does, and but it, it's it's got a real good sense of energy to it. It does. The whole the whole thing is really well shot. Um super into it so yeah i mean it's not a long movie it's, like, it's 95 minutes so it's not like it takes that long to get to the the good stuff as it were it's, it's not like the, the, the stuff at the start's bad it's just it it definitely picks up there's a, there's a moment in time where it's like okay i'm seeing what this movie's doing and it really starts to pick up its energy and i feel like yeah. oh yeah okay we're moving now i get what it's about it's all about him growing up and hurt as well to an extent because obviously the movie ends they take the baby back to to the house and nathan arizona catches them this time and he, he he assumes that the baker was the one who took it and they've rescued it until he sees how they feel that they're emotional about giving it back like okay now you took it and he kind of agrees nah i want to call this you know no harm done like you, you've brought brought him back it's like whatever mm. and he gives them some advice because they mention they're breaking up or is to think they're breaking up because of everything they went through. He's like, you know what? Sleep on it. Don't don't make the the choice because the movie ends with them lying in bed and he has one more dream and it's this more hopeful dream where he's like their grandparents and all the kids are coming to visit. And I was kind of chuckling to myself like, you know, technically this should be like, you know, present day, but even later because Nicholas Cage is even that old yet. <laughs> like. You know, because they're like eighties in this in this flash yeah. forward. So I'm thinking, nah, there's like iPhones and shit in the ceiling. <laughs> like, you know, stop I, picking it apart. They're they're out in the country and they're just having a lovely, I'm not a being, lovely old person. I'm not being home. serious, okay? Because after all, it's him imagining the future, so he can only imagine what he knows. Right, and I don't think he knows that much. He doesn't. He's he's a bit of an idiot. <laughs> Let's he be is. honest. I mean, he's a shit thief. He gets caught every single... In fact, one of my favourite times he gets caught is when he's locked himself out of the car. He, he runs out uh-huh. of the, the store and he's got the shotgun in his hand and he, he's, he's locked himself out. He's trying to get in the car. It's funny, yeah. Yeah. How, how incompetent can you be? Yeah, that's kind of the point, isn't it? Yeah. yeah he's, he's really shit at this, but he keeps doing it anyway. It's all tidbits just as it's wrapping up. This, this dream, it, ha- it has uh, Gail and Evel go back to prison. Like, they actually go back to the same hole they dug out of as if they're going to climb back through. Which, by the way, I did actually really like their escape. You don't really see most of it. You just see like the, the emergence out in the wet, yeah. 
the wet ground because it's like you know it's raining and they're just sort of crawling out the mud and John Goodman is just like it's almost you like you just see the hand and the head come up do you when he gets up in the rain it's it's almost like Shawshank Redemption which is funny because Shawshank Redemption didn't exist yet at right. least not at uh, least not it, the movie anyway right no exactly I, I I did this and I was like oh this looks like Shawshank and then I did a moment I was like hang on this was before that hmm. I mean, I don't think it's too similar, but it's similar enough that it made me think but of it. But it. It, it, that's what I thought. At first, I thought it was meant to be like a, a pastiche of that. Yeah. But then I was like, it can't be. It's funny, because, yeah, when they get back, I, I like that the first instinct is to gel their hair. Like, you see them in the, the bathroom, and they're, like, you're slicking their hair back with this. Just ridiculous amounts of hair gel. Yeah. And when they get to the house, like, they're, it's like she's like, oh, what's that smell? And, like, oh, pardon, pardon me, ma'am. We don't usually smell like this. We In our escape... From uh, the correctional facility, uh, we may have uh, run into the sewer line, um, but you know. I, I also I like how they phrase like, "Oh, we felt like the correctional facility could no longer uh, benefit us." Uh, yeah, the, the system was no longer you know do, doing what it needed for us. Yeah, we decided it had n- n- not much else to offer us, so we we yeah. decided to make her leave. <laughs> the funny guys. Of, yeah, they're, they're like going, "Yeah, we were there by choice." And, we gave it a try, and we're like, yeah, do you know what? We think we can do better. Even when they're uh, making their plans for like doing all that, because they're planning on robbing banks all across the state. Like, oh, we're going to go in the spree, and then we can retire. And then, uh, like, it's like, or, or until unless, or, or until we get caught. Yeah, until we get caught. <laughs> like, they're yeah. basically acknowledging they're very that's... realistic, aren't they? Yeah. Despite being the idiots that they are, they are very realistic. Um, yeah. So, no. It, so... It plays with all these things, and as much as it's actually kind of a dark story, because there's like a baby being kidnapped left and right, even when they have the baby, there is this funny element to it because like they seem like they're they're bonding to it, and then they're like not horrified That's, when they've left for, it behind. <laughs> for as dark an idea as it is, it never feels dark. It always feels fun. Yeah, but like I say, I think the movie benefited a lot by the our lead characters deciding they had made the wrong choice and they did give the baby back. Like yeah. I think the movie would. Ha- the story wouldn't work if at the end they kept the baby for themselves. No, the only way it would work is if, you know, like they, they made the choice and then, you know, Nathan Arizona was like, hey, you know what, you were right. Five's too many. But take Larry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I had that thought, but I do think that would have been too unrealistic. I agree. You know, what, what, what parent... Oh, yeah, I'll just have one. Well, no, but... but... Everything in this movie was so unrealistic true, that true. if it had happened, I don't think I'd question it that But to much. be fair, the emotion isn't. Like, that's, that's the no, key it's thing. not. Yeah. The, the, emo- the emotional t- behind the story that it's telling is actually a real thing. It's all a metaphor for this guy going through this crisis where he's tr- he needs to grow up and be responsible and accept all these, these things, and he's not. Um, yeah. And that's what the baker represents. So it, it makes so all of that actually works. And our, our, it does, yeah. In an oddly realistic way because it, that's what, you know, it's about real things. It's just telling it in a what is essentially kind of a cartoon it, yeah that's, that's probably the best way of describing it yeah so no it's, it's solid stuff uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit so I guess that'll take us to ratings yeah so uh, out of 10 then Connor go on give us a uh, I'm, I'm thinking a 7.5 I had a lot of fun with it but you know that, that first half hour whatever it is is kind of slow mm. and you know like you said that first 10 minute prologue is, is a bit too long and you know, you're just questioning. It's like, okay. Yeah, I think the prologue's a bit too long, and then I think the scene where they're taking the baby's a lot of fun. But then the stuff when they bring the baby home, and it's just them showing the baby things in the yeah, house. Yeah, uh, until we're back on the road, then. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it's yeah. Once we get to the the, the, the I don't know, 40, 35, 40 minute mark, where where we get into that sort of chase sequence, it, that's when it really picks up, and the rest of the yeah. movie's pretty pretty damn good. Um, so yeah. Uh, I, mm, I'm not sure. I mean, I I do kind of agree with the seven point five, but I'm t- I am tempted to nudge it up to the eight. I feel like I I feel there's enough craft here, and it does what it does well in the second half so well that I think I am going to go with the eight, even if there is some flaws. Obviously, that's fair. Uh, obviously, it's for me. Assuming we couldn't do point fives, it's closer to the eight than the seven for sure. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, very, very solid movie. And I, I wouldn't even rate it the lowest because I, uh, you know, I, I thought, I don't know if you've seen that Serious Man. That was one of their, that was no. a really quick thing they did. I think it was after uh, No Country for Old Men. They did this movie really quickly and it yeah. came out like the year after. Uh, and it was okay. Like, there was some good stuff in it. But, you know, there's just there's some Coen Brothers movies that I do rank a bit lower than uh, some of the rest. Uh, 
Like, I'm not a huge fan of Big Lebowski, which I know is mm. going to upset some people, but I think that's okay. I didn't love the Big Lebowski. That's fair enough. You, you like what you like. It's a meme generator. I'll give it that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And even, I, even I'll use memes from it. Like, yeah, but you know, you'll use memes from anything. The Dude Abides is a very good little saying, but, you know, I, I don't love that movie. Uh, then again, maybe a rewatch is uh, it'll perk me up, and I'll maybe see it in a way that I didn't before. But uh, but no, so that is uh, that is raising Arizona. So by all means, let us know what you thought of that movie in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to Patreon.com/slash TV, which of course uh, one of the perks is that you can vote on these once a month voting episodes. The vote for next month is up. Like we say, it was all the thriller movies and the serial killer stuff. So you can go and check that out. Uh, but otherwise guys that is us so thank you once again for watching keep watching movies we'll see you next time <laughs>